Um, yes, Sylvia, I'm okay. here. Excellent. Great. Great. Okay. Well, um, our last but not least lecture of our IWUL workshop. Um, today, right now, we welcome Professor Leon Lowe. Um, I first met Professor um, actually the same time with Professor Asahiro at Kyushu University. Um, he has been most instrumental on organizing all our trips and our highly valued translator of all things Japanese. <laughs> what to order on the menu, you know, where to go, how do we get to the tube station. I have always admired Leon on being able to master the Japanese language with such ease as a native Singaporean. I've enjoyed all our exchanges throughout the years and definitely you are a person I will visit if I ever come to Fukuoka again. So um, currently uh, Professor Lo is uh, assistant professor in the Faculty of Design Department of Environmental Design at the Kyushu University, Japan. His main interest is in design education. His research study involves product design education, design education, and as a form of general education to develop critical thinking and creativity in elementary, junior high school and high school students. And I just want to show everybody, see, I still have your book. Yes. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Sylvia. And we I want one. I want one. Can we? Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> that's mine. I can send you one. <laughs> yes. So it says, can we design design education? So interesting. Um, and today, Professor Leon will give us a talk on our youngsters, maker of a resilient city. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia, for uh, such warm uh, introduction. Uh, in fact, uh, thank you, Professor Aria, for your um, interesting lecture. And um, your lecture reminds me of home. Uh, so I'm from Singapore, uh, Sylvia has uh, mentioned. So let me just uh, share my screen. Um, okay, maybe I'll just share it this way. Okay, I hope you can um, see my screen. Um, if in any time, uh, if you have problem seeing my screen, um, please let me know. Uh, all right. So I'm trying to, I'm just going to try um, putting it on a presentation mode. So if there's some problem in switching the slides, I will, I will probably keep it like this. Okay. So I'll, let me just go into presentation mode. Um, Okay, so um, I, I hope that um, you can see the slides. Okay, so um, once again, um, I would like to um, introduce myself. So my name is uh, Leon. Um, I'm from Singapore and uh, currently at Kyushu University. And um, I want to take this uh, opportunity to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to share uh, on such a very um, meaningful and important platform. Um, so today my topic, as you can see, uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about, uh, about our youngsters who probably uh, may be uh, kind of, um, probably they may be important uh, stakeholders uh, and also the maker of our resilient city. So just a little bit about myself. So um, I'm from Singapore. Uh, so I hope that you can see the slide. So I changed, I changed my slide. If you still see the first slide, please let me know. Okay. Um, so I'm from Singapore. And um, before I came to Kyushu University, I am actually a school teacher. So I'm a trained um, uh, teacher uh, to teach in a secondary school. So I taught uh, design uh, and technology. So basically um, it's about the design, a design subject uh, in the secondary school in Singapore. And then um, after uh, my uh, work as a secondary school teacher, I went to, uh, I came to 
Kyushu University uh, in the Faculty of Design uh, in the Department of Environmental Design. So my main area of research um, is on design education. So my initial years of uh, research uh, focused on product design education, uh, mainly on um, looking at what um, university students learn in product design and also looking at the um, uh, curriculum uh, development for product design education. But in the last few years, um, I have been going back to my um, uh, first love, uh, which is um, uh, design education in schools. So I first started as a, as a school teacher teaching design in the schools. And then I did um, research on design education at university level. And then in the last few years, I went back uh, to where I started again uh, to look into design education uh, in schools. So um, what I uh, look at mainly for design education in schools is about how can we develop creativity and uh, critical thinking uh, in our students through design. So um, my teaching journey began in um, 2001. So um, like I mentioned, I was a secondary school teacher and you can see uh, in the picture, um, uh, it's my, uh, I'm in the picture uh, on the floor, right? So um, you can see how young I was, um, by the way, um, probably only young teachers will do this in a, you know, in a photo taking session. So you can see how young I, I, I used to be. That was uh, almost uh, 20 years ago. So I started off um, as a secondary school teacher uh, teaching design. So I spent about eight and a half years teaching design in the secondary school. And um, in the picture, you can see the sketches that students have done. This is the, um, the initial work, um, learning about um, how to draw in the design program. So, um, so you see that um, it's quite like um, probably what you have, I'm, I'm not sure, maybe it might be quite similar to what you have done in your first year uh, when you learn how to draw uh, geometrical shapes, all right? And um, during my um, time in the secondary school, I kind of realized that um, students can be very creative and um, they have their own ideas, all right? And uh, on the side of the, at the side of the slide, you, uh, these are some of the things that my students have done. Um, so I realized that students, Students, the kids can be uh, pretty uh, creative, actually. And I just want to uh, have a little quiz, um, just to um, just to have a little bit of a uh, you know uh, fun time, just to have a little quiz. So if you if you have your smartphone, all right. If you have a smartphone. And if you use the cam your camera, or you can use a tablet, it is fine, all right? Or, or if, maybe let me just go back to my slide mode. Um, if, you, if you have a tablet, all right, it can do also. You just need to shoot at the uh, QR code. And I can kind of put the link in the chat. If it's, oh, oh, thank you very much, Professor Aria. So if you go to the page, you should be able to see this, uh, okay? You should be able to see this over here. So if you, if you go to the um, QR code, uh, I'll show you again. So if you go to the QR code and if you go to the uh, URL, uh, you should be able to go to this page over here. All right, so I just want to ask you uh, some, uh, simple questions um, so to see whether, uh, what is your guess? So you see that this page um, is a very nicely sketched um, kind of fashion design, right? So who do you think is most likely the person who did this? So is it an undergraduate, a fashion designer, or do you think it's a secondary school or a high school student? So uh, I'll give you maybe about a minute or two to think about and um, to, to kind of uh, 
uh, let's see what is the answer, okay? Okay, I think we have, uh, we, we probably still have some more audience. Okay, thank you very much. I think uh, we have some more coming up. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, we, we can still have some more. Okay, we have about 30 more seconds to go. I'm, I'm still I'm timing. All right, we have about 30 seconds to go. And um, okay, are you ready? Last call, 10 more seconds. I'm going to release the answer. Okay, all right, good. So um, we have about 28 uh, respondents, um, responses. So nine of the audience think that um, it's an undergrad and then um, 10, maybe 10 persons think, think that um, done by fashion designer and then 10 um, participants think that um, it's done by a school student. All right, the answer is it is actually done by a school student, a secondary school or a high school student, okay? So um, yeah, thank you very much. I have, there's some more questions to come, okay? So if you keep on looking at your, your phone, all right, okay, I'm going to the next page. So you should see your slide change. So if you look at your phone, you should see that uh, go to the slide. So I've changed the slide. You should be able to see this page, all right? So um, it's an architecture design, um, models made up. So I'm going to give you a baby about one or two minutes just to think about who actually made this architecture design. So is it a high school student, an undergraduate, a postgraduate student? So what do you think? So I'm gonna set the timer, okay? So just now was about a, a minute. So we probably have about 30 seconds more, maybe. So what do you think? So what do you think for this? Okay, you still have some more time. Or you have about um, maybe about 10 seconds more. So what do you think? Oh, we have a 29, okay, good. Okay, we have some more. Two more seconds and okay, done. All right, let me tell you the answer, okay? So this architecture design uh, plus all the models and stuff, okay? It was, it was done by a high school student, all right? So we have six participants who got it correctly. In fact, most, I think most of the uh, participants think that it's uh, undergraduate work and two participants think that um, it's postgraduate, okay? So, but in fact, it is, it is done, it was done by a high school student, all right? Next, last question, okay, for the quiz. Okay, so if you look at your phone again, um, you will see that the page will change. So if you go to this page, I'm gonna give you maybe about two minutes to think about now, all right? Who do you think made this architecture design? Was it an undergraduate? Was it again a high school student? Or was it a postgraduate student? So I'm gonna give you, uh, just now I say two minutes, right? So I have started the timer. So you still have some time to think about it. So what do you think? Just now we see that um, the quality, the quality done by the uh, high school student can be pretty good, right? So what do you think for this? You have still, we still have some time. Um, maybe I'll give you another 30 seconds for the audience. Okay, well, we, we have a okay, um, quite a close result here between the undergrad and the high school student. Um, okay, we still have some more response coming in. Okay. All right, we have about five more seconds to go. Any more tickets? So, okay. 
Let me tell you the answer now, all right? So uh, before I tell you the answer, let's look at the results. Very clear, right? Well, so it's quite a close call. So 12 um, participants think that um, it's done by undergraduate. Then uh, 14 uh, majority, so the highest number, um, think that uh, it's high school student, and then four is postgraduate. And um, in fact, the answer is, uh, this um, architecture design was done by an undergraduate. All right. So if you look at the quality that I have shown you just now, so I, I hope that I can start to convince you that, um, in fact, our students can be uh, pretty good all right, in design. Okay. All right, let's um, go back to my slides. And in fact, if you look at the type of work that the students have done, uh, they, are, they are pretty good quality, actually. All right. So let me just um, just go to my next slide. I'm going to go back to my presentation. So, uh, oh, OK, sorry. Before I go, uh, just let me switch my slide. OK, um, okay just, let me, just let me get back to here. Now, um, okay. So, um, okay. If you look at your, uh, if you look at your phone again, um, all right. If you look at your phone again, um, the page has changed. So you will be at this page um, if you are holding on to your phone. So what it means is that um, subsequently along the way, um, during my presentation. If you have any questions um, that you would like to ask, um, it can be a form of Q&A. You, um, you can use this page to just type in any, your question anytime or your comments anytime. And you can just um, click send and it will go into the system. And uh, along the way, probably at the midpoint of this uh, presentation, I will kind of uh, do a kind of a stop, break, stop, stop, break, all right? And then uh, probably we can look at some of these questions and comments. And then after that, uh, I will move on, all right, uh, to continue on with the rest of my presentation. So at any point of time, uh, if you have any questions, you can always use your phone or your PC or your tablet. Um, as long as you're on this page um, that you are in, um, you can always ask, uh, type in your question, okay? So this is how we can do it. Uh, all right, I'm going back to my presentation uh, slide mode. Um, if you are not able to see the slides, um, so please let me know. Okay, so I'm now changing my slide to, to the next slide. So I think for this, um, for this workshop, um, I believe we have heard from many uh, distinguished uh, professors and experts uh, on um, developing a resilient city on uh, landscape remediation, all right? And also we can see how the landscape architects, uh, the architects, the designers and artists can be involved in such a process. And uh, today I would like to um, throw in a question, um, probably for um, all the experts over here to think about. So what about our students and what about uh, the kids? Can they also play a part um, in such a process? Okay, so like I mentioned, um, from my teaching experience and from my research, I see that our, our students can be pretty creative. And um, through their creativity, I believe that the students can be important uh, stakeholders um, in this process of developing a resilient city and especially. Uh, in processes uh, such as the kind of uh, bottom-up initiatives. And in today's um, presentation, um, there, are, there will be two parts that I will touch on. So for the first part of the presentation, I will show you some examples of uh, student creativity. And then in the second part of the presentation, um, I will just uh, give you a very quick uh, example how um, do or how can we develop uh, student creativity through um, educational programs, okay? And um, 
in the first part, in terms of student uh, examples of student creativity, I will um, try to convince you and I will try to show you some examples to show that uh, students can be uh, good designers and at the same time, they can also be very good problem solvers. Okay. So case one. So in this case, uh, in the first case that I'm going to show you, uh, it was um, it was uh, during part of my research trip in Melbourne, Australia, during one of my school visits. So in this um, case, um, I what I was able to see uh, was that how students are able to create their own um, learning environment. Okay, so. This is a secondary school um, that I'm showing you. All right. Um, in this school, this is not a private school. So this is a government school. All right. But um, the programs that this school um, what is running is a little bit um, different from the usual government school. In this school, the principal allow allow students to um, go into their interests uh, to kind of um, design their own learning experience um, and um, this principle also allowed uh, the students to kind of um, create their own learning environments on how in terms of how they want to learn or how their their environment can be so the the photo that i'm showing you is uh, a, a little a little garden and and a kind of um, Kind of a little, kind of um, agricultural farm uh, that the students have created. So why did students create this um, this agricultural farm? Is because uh, in this school there is a group of students who are very interested in um, growing vegetables, in plantings, in plants, in agriculture. So um, what they did was to set up their own um, little space to grow um, flowers and to grow uh, vegetables, all right? So the place that you are seeing in this photo, um, the place is actually created by the students. And um, the students also created this, um, you can see in the photo, the traditional uh, kind of uh, pizza oven, all right? So you can see that um, although the students are pretty young, but given their interest, they can create a very nice, um, very um, kind of nicely designed um, kind of landscape and environment, a very green environment. And in part of this um, environment that they have created, they also have a they have a kind of created a plot of a plot to plant vegetables. So. Um, some of these vegetables, in fact, quite a number of that, these vegetables are being sold to the local community. And um, the, the products, the produce, are so popular that um, they usually run out. Um, so the, the demand is, is actually more than the supply, all right? So you can see here that um, the students, the edible flowers grown by the students, they are provided to the uh, local cafes. All right. And um, right at the entrance, at the, when, if we enter the school, right at the entrance, you can see a little card over here on the, on the right side of the slide. Um, the vegetables, they sell it. Uh, and some of these vegetables, like um, you can see the carrots, uh, the green tomatoes, all right. Uh, some of them, all these these vegetables are given free to the um, to the residents, to the community. Okay, and in the same school, there are some students who are very interested in animals. So they actually use uh, some of the they transform some of the classrooms into a kind of. Um, you can call it a kind of uh, zoo that is being used to, kept, to keep reptiles. So this group of students are very interested in uh, animals, especially reptiles. So the, the place that you are looking at in the photo, 
they are actually being set up by the students. So the students learn uh, about the characteristics of the different reptiles, the kind of uh, temperature uh, that is required to keep them and the kind of environment. And they requested money from the school and then they just went on to build the environment. And um, I believe this is a little, little place for the turtles, I believe. And then you can see that um, the, the students are pretty young. Um, so secondary school students can be between 13 to about uh, 16, 17 years old. So um, the senior students uh, will be the leaders. And then the junior students, when they come into the school, uh, when they join this uh, group, the senior uh, students will be the ones teaching the junior students. So it is a kind of self-sustained group. Um, there are teachers in charge, but the teachers usually don't kind of um, go in to, you know, to dictate what the students should do. So the teachers are usually the kind of teachers in charge, but they leave it to the students to, to build the, uh, the place, the learning environment. And uh, you can see some, of, this is a lizard that they, the students catch. And some of, and this is snake. And some of these reptiles are kind of endangered species, I was told. And this is a little workplace uh, built by the students uh, for their little workroom. All right. So, so the first case, I show you how students are able to um, build the environment around them. And uh, in this, in the case of Melbourne uh, in Australia, the students actually created their own uh, learning environment. In the second case that I'm going to show you, um, which is also part of my uh, research school visit in Auckland, New Zealand, um, I will show you how uh, students can be uh, very good environment designers. And um, you, you already saw during the Q&A, uh, not the Q&A, the quiz, that students can be very good uh, architect, uh, architectural uh, designers. So in this case, um, I'm gonna, case two, I'm going to show you about um, uh, environment. Students can be very good environment uh, designers. So in Auckland, um, students, um, some of the students uh, who are interested in visual design, uh, in visual communication design, they are able to take up this subject um, to learn about architectural design. So you see that this is, what I'm showing you is just um, some of the journal, the folio design journal pages uh, taken from the students. So um, the students will do site uh, analysis. I think uh, that's what the university students uh, will do. But of course, if you look at the intensity, it may not be um, that intense as compared to the undergraduates. But if you, if you look at the quality of the work, um, they can be comparable, all right, with the undergraduate, uh, at least with the year one or year two kind of work. And um, so in the site analysis, um, students do go to the site for site visits, all right. So um, they assess the different characteristics of the site. And um, based on the site, um, students will then um, generate ideas, ideas um, for the architectural design, okay? And if you look at the kind of um, exploration and the details that they have done, um, it is pretty impressive considering they are just um, high school students. Um, by the way, this is done by high school students at about maybe the age of 17, all right? And, um, for the students, they also learn how to um, create uh, models all right, for their architectural design. So this is another uh, journal uh, on the waterfront. The theme is actually to design a library for the waterfront. So um, that's the site analysis. And then um, from the site analysis, the student, this is a page where the students uh, explore the, the concept of the architectural design, uh, 
terms of the first floor, what are the different elements or spaces, and then this is the second, and then on the on the other side of the photo is on the second floor. And if you look at um, after the analysis, uh, students will go into the ideation phase where you can see that um, this is the architectural design, how they come out with the designs. And, um, and students also get to they learn how to uh, build computer models. And you can see that um, the, the, their ideas are pretty, pretty impressive. And uh, for this student, um, uh, this student is uh, quite a fan of uh, Zaha Hadi. And um, so this student is trying to play with the form. All right, and um, you can see that um, at the end of the project, um, the computer generated model uh, of the um, architecture has been kind of uh, built up. So from here, um, you can see that um, so far from the two cases um, I have shown you that students can be a very, a very good um, environment creator and uh, they can also be a very good uh, environment designer. So, um, so this is the first part. I would just want to take a break and um, just to see whether if anyone has any questions uh, from, the, from the board, okay? So, so far, I, I don't think, so, so far I don't think there's any questions. Yeah, there. Let me refresh the page. Okay, so far there's no. Okay, so maybe I'll just open to the floor uh, just for one, one question. Is there anyone who has any question to ask before I go on to the next part of my presentation? Okay, I have a question. Okay. Um, when, when these projects were initiated to these high school kids, mm -hmm. uh, did they think it was hard? Um, you mean the students? Uh, um, no. In fact, the... Okay, I'm not sure... I, I'm not sure in general uh, whether students think that it's hard, but um, because the students are being um, developed um, from their junior years. So if, when they take up this subject, like for example, they, start, they started from, uh, for example, high school, year one, year two, and year three. So by the time they reach the senior year, they will be able to come up with a pretty impressive work. So along the way, they, are all being kind of, uh, their learning are all scaffolded. So teachers usually build their skills uh, bit by bit. So by the time they reach the senior year, they are quite accustomed to this kind of work. And um, I spoke to quite a number of them uh, in their studio and they, they seem to really, those who took up this subject, they seem to be really enjoying themselves. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, um, so if there's no not much question, uh, let me just um, continue and then you can continue to ask me question later on, okay? So, okay, just now I showed, in the first two cases, I showed you some examples about the environment, uh, architectural design. Uh, in, in case number three, I will show you that um, students can also be pretty good uh, product designers. So these cases are taken from uh, Singapore and Melbourne in Australia. So this is um, a case from uh, Singapore. So in Singapore, um, secondary school students uh, aged between 13 to 17, they are able to take these subjects called the design technology subject. And in there, in this subject, students mainly learn about uh, design and uh, most of the things that they do uh, related to product design. So in this um, project that I'm showing you, um, this the designer is uh, about age, maybe about 15 or 16. So this student actually wanted to design a table for the kids, for children, 
where where um, the the whole idea is that um, for for the kids um, when they use um, you know pencils or station you know color pencils um, to draw or for for their homework. So when they finish with the with the uh, work, they can just swipe the pencils right to the edge. So if I think from in one of the in the right side, I think in the right side, right? I think so. Of the picture, you can see that at the okay, you may not be able to see that clearly. I'm not sure whether if you can see my mouse, but um, okay, I I'm not sure whether if I can have a kind of not sure whether if I can use a pointer. Maybe let me okay, laser pointer. Okay, I hope that you can see the laser pointer. So um, if you look at the side of the table here, there is a little slot over here, which is not that easy to see. So there's a little slot over here. So when the, when the kids, when the children finish, you know, their coloring or their homework or whatever, so they can just swipe all these pencils um, down to this slot. And then um, once they go into the table, um, these pencils will be able to be arranged all nicely and they can be taken out at the other end at the side of the table. So um, this this is the so this this table is basically um, you know it's a working working prototype. Okay. So this this the main function of the table uh, does this, okay, to keep all these stationaries or the pencils uh, neatly and allow uh, these pencils to be taken out after use. So um, this is another project. This is a wire, wire coin. You can see that, of course, um, the, the product is a little bit big. And um, this project was done maybe about more than 10 years ago. Yeah. And, um, and the thing in Singapore um, for, for this subject, for students in this subject, they are not um, that of course there are 3D printers and things like that, but because the they go through examinations and usually in the examination they are not allowed to use uh, 3D printers and stuff. So most of the time um, when they build do the projects, um, they are just using materials like wood, metal, or plastic. Um, all right, they in fact they are required to use this any of of these three types of materials as part of the study requirements. So you can see that the product, well, it's a wire, wire coin. Um, it's a little bit big, of course, um, compared to today's standard, but um, com thinking about um, the type of materials that, are, that students are re restricted in using, um, it can be quite uh, an impressive uh, kind of product okay, done by the students. And this is another product done by the student. This is for the elderly. So this is basically an exercise, uh, a tool to exercise the, the arm. So there, there is a um, kind of rubber band also uh, in the center. So if you pull, if the elderly could, you know, stretch it. So they are basically doing the arm exercise. And then um, right at the center is just some um, kind of arithmetic. Uh, mathematical kind of uh, game uh, for the elderly. All right, so uh, just to just for the elderly to be engaged. Okay, so this is um, also designed by I think a fifteen or sixteen year old uh, student. This is an an, an example from uh, my visit in Melbourne, Australia. So this is done by a high school student, maybe about 17 to maybe about 17 years old. So he wants to, he wanted to design a bicycle lock. So, um, so from before he come up with the different ideas, he will go into his market research uh, and also looking at uh, current solutions. And then um, you can look at the sketchings. Um, design ideation that he has done and then on the side the next part of the just beside this ideation is the development of the idea 
And um, in fact, this um, prototype was created was created by a 3D printer. So you can look at the CAD drawings that he has done. And um, eventually he created this working prototype using the 3D printer. Okay. So you can see that um, students are pretty good um, if they are being taught uh, the process and the skills, they can be pretty good uh, product designers. So from these examples, from the three cases, um, I, I do not have much time to show you many, uh, but from the three cases that I've shown you, we can see that the kids, students can be very creative. They can be very good problem solvers and they are very good critical thinkers. And the thing is that um, um, design, all right, um, design, usually when we look at um, learning design, we look at, learning design at university level, but design can be taught as a form of general education uh, to school children. And um, in some of these countries like Singapore, um, in Hong Kong, I think you have this subject also, uh, and also in Australia, New Zealand, Taiwan, and um, in UK, in America, and in some of the European countries, you have subjects called the design technology and technology education in the junior high school or the secondary school. And this subject um, has a lot of opportunity to teach um, design to students. And in some of the countries that do not have this kind of subject, uh, sometimes the design learning can be in integrated into the school curriculum. And in the last case that I'm going to show you is about uh, how to integrate um, design learning into the school curriculum if the national curriculum does not have a dedicated kind of design subject. So um, this is a case of uh, Japan. So in Japan, high school students um, in the government, uh, the normal kind of uh, national curriculum, uh, we do not have a design subject in the high school. So um, in this, in this case, I'm gonna show just a very quickly to show you a project that uh, my colleagues and I have done uh, with one of the high school in Fukuoka city. So um, um, under this uh, project, we are, we are doing it under this, um, what we call the SDGs design school. So just a very quick introduction, what is the SDGs design school? So the, the SDGs design school is um, within the SDGs design unit. So the SDGs design unit is just a unit formed in 2018 in the Faculty of Design uh, in Kyushu University. So if you go to the website, you will be able to look at it in more detail. So basically SDGs design unit uh, wants to engage the community, the industry, and also to work with uh, university partners uh, to, to promote and engage in SDGs, the sustainable development goals. And Within this unit, we created the um, SDGs Design School, uh, which is uh, where uh, my colleagues and I have been um, doing projects with the schools. Um, and then in this case about uh, Fukusho High School that we are working with in Fukuoka City, um, we kind of introduced design learning into their school program. Um, like I said, the high school program, technically we do not have design subjects, but we kind of, um, try to integrate it, design learning into their school program. So um, this is the framework that we are using to integrate the program. So basically we, we kind of uh, develop a kind of workshop for the students. Um, the workshop follows the design process. So the main, the main uh, point is that students need to look for uh, real world problems that can be related to the SDGs. And then they make use of the design process to come up with a solution. And through the process, they develop important 21st century skills and then social emotional learning skills. And um, it can be quite difficult to integrate into a school program because there's no dedicated uh, subject for it. So what we did was to negotiate and discuss with the uh, teachers. And um, in fact, the teachers uh, in the school are very interested to put this 
uh, kind of uh, learning into their global business program. So we, we kind of ran the first workshop in 2019 for 17 students, year one students. And then uh, this is how it looks like. So uh, basically it's just a three, four day, three to four day program. And each session is just about 50 to 160 minutes. In fact, we only have about 50 minutes. So it's a very short program. So we cannot bring the whole design process inside, but we can only just give them a very quick flavor. So students work in group to look for problems. They create ideas and then they present their ideas. And um, we also created the opportunity for the students to present in one of the um, furniture maker. So this is the office of the uh, local uh, furniture maker in Japan, uh, in Foko Fukuoka city. So this is in uh, Okamura, uh, it's a local furniture maker. So the students presented to the, uh, some of the industrial uh, partners that we have. And um, we continue on with the program. So in 2022, we increased the number of workshops. So the original 17 students now in year two continue on with this workshop. Uh, we increased the intensity and the complexity of the workshop, but we also added on to with uh, 28 students from year three from the global business pro, uh, or from year three, and then another uh, 20 students from the global business program. But in 2021, this year, um, we actually kind of um, expanded uh, the program to a school-wide program for all the 320 students, um, year three students, and we call this a SDGs design challenge. So this challenge is, uh, because it's a school-wide program, so we have been running it for, um, I think for maybe for three months, three to four months now. So the program is still in progress. So this is how it looks like. So because it's a whole school program, so this is the first session. So we had to brief all the students. So you can see all the students are here for year, year three students. And then uh, this is the, uh, this, you can see, this is how it, uh, it is in the classroom. Because it's a pandemic, we kind of cut down the group, you know, the group work gathering. Um, we get students to use tablets and uh, go online uh, to put some of their discussions using the online whiteboard. So what are some of the challenges, um, you know, bringing design learning into school programs, uh, especially when there's no uh, design program for the national curriculum? Uh, firstly, is the preparation for teaching and learning materials. Um, secondly, is to prepare students, uh, teachers' readiness to teach this subject because uh, most of the teachers are not trained to teach design. Um, and then students' readiness to learn uh, the design process. And there are still uh, some more issues that we are currently tackling at this moment. So from the examples that I've shown, I hope that um, I have given you some ideas that um, to some ideas to consider that the students can be very important stakeholders um, in, the, in building a resilient city. So hopefully in your projects, you may kind of um, consider uh, some roles that students can play, okay? And um, thank you very much. And this is the end for my presentation. And I hope that we may have some time for Q&A. So you can use the page that I've shown you for Q&A, or if not, you, we can just have a verbal, it's fine. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Leon. Thank you. For your presentation. Um, yes, I think uh, um, nurturing students or nurturing young kids to think more intuitively uh, is very important because it, um, because lateral thinking, it's also part of um, thinking intuitively, because I think it will prepare the person to be better citizens um, and uh, with, a, with an awareness on the environment and also the importance of design in their lives. So I think it's a, it's a really good initiative. So any uh, comments from 
Others? Any tutors, students? Uh, one question. Yes. Um, because I also been um teaching to the non design non designer students, so I, I found it is quite tough. Cause um, yeah, uh, generally they don't go to gallery or they don't really interest in art or design, and uh, so that's quite challenging to um engage them to this kind of um design field. So uh, I'm just wondering, is there any tips you can? tell us <laughs> to share and actually i have a second question should i ask together okay. um okay maybe maybe one at a time <laughs> <laughs> okay um all right um firstly about getting students interested uh, in, in design um i think it's um really a very good uh, you know a very big challenge uh, over here because um you know in for secondary school students, for non-design non students, right? um, in general, their interests do not lie uh, in design. Okay. Um, but why they are interested in design, um, in fact, most of them, um, why they take up this subject uh, for, the, for this group of kids is because they are interested to, uh, you know, to do some, to kind of, they're interested in the, uh, the making process, they are interested in the practical process, uh, and also some of them are very interested in the thinking process, in the, the design process uh, that they are doing. They may not um, kind of particularly um, plan to be a designer, but they just enjoy the process of designing. And, and the thing is that um, these students uh, come to us or when we meet all these students who are non-design students, um, they usually are not very exposed to design. And, um, and one of the ways that um, we try to do is that um, along the way, we try to uh, input a little bit of uh, exposure uh, to the students. Like for example, what are some of the in innovative uh, designs? Um, that is around, uh, and these are some of the. These may be some of the examples that may kind of be related to their interest, uh, but with the hope to kind of expose to give them much more exposure, uh, but not to you know uh, hope that they will move on to really like design, but firstly to give them the exposure first. So this is usually along the way we will drop some of these uh, as good examples for them. But of course, it depends on your objective when you teach design to these uh, non-design students. Uh, what, what is your, over, your ultimate outcome of it? Do you want them to uh, be very interested in design or do you want them to use design as a platform to learn uh, certain thinking skills? So, so that may also be a bit different in terms of the approach. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what, I, what I think. Well, what about the second question? Second question is um, um for the uh, design professional uh, student like uh, us right now. Sometimes we will give a, as a tutor, we will give some comments. I'm just not sure um how to balance because I feel like sometimes our um comments or advice may limit their creativity because we know too much about the reality. So um, how to balance? But sometimes some of them are pretty dreamer too. So it's quite um, challenge, also very tough for me to really um, find that balance. Mm -hmm. So yeah. 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 So uh, yeah. <laughs> my question probably is, uh, do you think we will kind of limit uh, students' creativity? Mm -hmm. um, I don't, okay. Um, okay, maybe let's look at it this way. Um, your question is very uh, valid. And um, I get the same question from the high school teachers also that I'm working with. So a lot of time they have been asking like, uh, so how much advice do we give them and how much is enough? But if we give them too much advice, 
um, perhaps the students will take our advice. And then after that, there goes their creativity and originality. So the, the, so the teachers um, that I'm working with, they are also afraid uh, in terms of this aspect. So um, what, I, what I suggest is that um, for me, um, for me, uh, even when I was, I'm working with my uh, students, uh, whether it's uh, the secondary school students, uh, the, the university students, um, I, when I, I don't really kind of um, give them an answer or what they do, but I ask them a lot of questions. So in the kind of teaching uh, strategy approach, um, I find uh, questioning techniques, que using questions to get students to answer their own questions is a very good um, strategy to use. And um, I find that um, it is also quite common for teachers teaching design um, to whether it's to university students or to the um, you know high school students to use questions too. Like for example, I, when I was in um, Melbourne, so I asked one of the teacher who used to be a product designer. So how do you how do you uh, you know advise students? So he told me that oh the best way to for him to guide students is to ask questions. So he doesn't give answers, but he try to kind of ask, uh, use questions to guide the students in a way to answer their own questions. Um, but of course, when it comes to the technical, technical aspect, um, you know, only probably the professionals, the teachers or the, you know, the professionals will know, will have the know-how. So in that sense, of course, um, providing that kind of technical advice is good. Like for example, um, you know, if you use this material, um, it may not work because um, the characteristics of this material is like this. So if you use it, use this for this purpose, you know, um, you, you may have a problem after that. So that, that kind of thing may be, may be okay. But in, in a lot of sense, I think um, in terms of uh, advice itself, um, perhaps using questions um, will be a good strategy to use. Yes, I think I think that's a that's a really good way because I remember when uh, we we both actually teach um, uh, the same course. It's kind of like a common core kind of course. We call it the general education, and so we meet a lot of different students with different backgrounds. And um, and I think uh, for the for the for the students, it's it's who who don't have a background. We kind of have to understand where they're coming from. I remember one of our classes is a land art um, uh, uh, class. And so we always collaborate with an artist um, and, um, and he has a way of engaging the students um, rather than sometimes, you know, I think for us, it's hard to do not to um, interfere too much and for him his way was actually to ask questions understand what the student is trying to do and if the student is genuinely interested in uh, going a certain direction we have to understand where they're coming from and he would guide them to achieve what they want to achieve rather than sort of having this predetermined um, idea of what they should do. It's a very tricky thing and everyone is different and it takes a lot of time and patience to understand each individual. Yeah. But I think with the uh, more um, design aware type of learning and type of education from early stage, early, early life, um, I think um, the, the, the kids would would think more intuitively. And, um, and I think we might get less students who would look at us and think and ask, oh, what do I have to do now? How do I design a building? Rather, we might get kids who are like your kids whom you met in your high school where they just, you give them a thing and they just have no problem. They just go right in and design a house, a house that they like. Maybe it doesn't make sense. Maybe, you know, all the regulations are wrong, but they would do something without worry. 
Yeah. So I think uh, I think it's it takes time to to have to to drive that. Mm -hmm. And uh, Professor Aria. Yes, I agree with Sylvia. Uh, because uh, I think I also teach uh, critical thinking uh, and creative thinking for uh, landscape architecture, uh, new curriculum. At the beginning, we, we, we don't have that uh, creative thinking in our courses in landscape architecture undergraduate degree. But uh, I assume that uh, the higher it uh, the expression, the lesser creative thinking <laughs> sometimes because uh, they don't have uh, critical thinking, the lack of uh, asking questions, they are waiting for uh, case study, they're looking for the better design by the uh, idol, uh, celebrities, the landscape architect. So this is uh, very important. Because I think uh, the similar to what Sylvia mentioned, uh, uh, the children have emotions and they ask questions. So they have the freedom to ask questions and uh, they don't have the pre shortage of uh, experience. So they don't have theory. So this is very good for physical thinking, I mean, uh, for creative thinking, they have to have critical thinking. So I I love the way you present your case study, but I think uh, behind the case study is more important. I mean, uh, because uh, how the student draw that picture, how the student think about the solution of the design. So I think I would love to know more about that, but I think uh, because of time limitation, so mm -hmm. you can't explain everything, but I uh, would like to know. Okay, just a very Thank quick you. one. Uh, in fact, yes, yeah, very, very important because um, before we can get the students to really, um, like for example, um, if I give them a theme, they can start to operate in a designer mode to start to look for site analysis and then, um, they look at which is the site that is appropriate and look at the different characteristics of the site and start to come up with ideas. Before they can do that, we need to, we need to build the basics. So what I'm, in education, that's what we call, uh, we need to scaffold their learning by stages. So before we can have a kind of ideal uh, outcome by year three, like for even for university students, it works the same way. Like for example, um, let me bring down, let's say, for high school student. So for high school student by year three, uh, before they graduate, they need to be able to uh, identify a, 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 an appropriate site. They need to identify, uh, the analyze the characteristics and then propose a solution. So this is the ideal, this is the outcome that we want. But before they can reach this outcome, at year one, we need to give them the basics to build their capacity, their design capacity to that level. So maybe at year one, the design projects are very structured and uh, the scope is very small. So perhaps that means in year one, they may learn, okay, firstly, uh, when it can be in a project where they start to learn basic architectural drawing, they make uh, basic uh, models, uh, they analyze a very simple site, and then after that, um, they look at the different elements. So, so through the projects, by building very simple projects and then increasing the intensity, uh, this is important. And a lot of time, uh, for example, we want students to be able to think and like ask questions and ask the right questions. But a lot of times, uh, sometimes uh, teachers miss out the important part where we also need to teach students how to ask questions. So before they can ask questions, we need to teach them how to ask questions. And a lot of times, um, the way how we ask questions will become the model for students to follow. So this in education, this is what we call role modeling. So if, if let's say very consciously, we build a certain way of asking questions into how we teach, then, then students, 
when we when we do this every time, like for example, uh, the way we ask questions. So when students experience this slowly, bit by bit, initially they are not used to the way we ask them in terms of the questions. But when they are more accustomed or when they acclimatize to the way we ask questions, you know, then slowly they will know that, okay, my teacher is going to ask me this question. And before I'm going to look for my teacher, I'm going to do all this preparation. So that, you know, I, so the students start to anticipate. And when they are able to anticipate, they are actually learning how to ask good questions and prepare for them. So, so this can oh, you, you think uh, you have to teach the student to ask questions? Uh, yeah. Ah. I, I think uh, we need to, the base, that means at the very beginning level, we need to teach the students how to, how to ask questions. So right, right from the basics. And, and I think design learning at a young age, I, I, I think uh, it's not about turning everybody into a designer. I think this is something that should be clear because, uh, because actually in every single field, you need creativity. Yes. You can be a creative accountant, although you haven't really met too many. But there are, you know, there, there are. And you can have a very creative uh, uh, plumber. I mean, basically, it's about thinking laterally. Yes. And, and it, it works with everything. It's not just about turning everyone into a designer. I think that's yes. the beauty of it. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, even students who are non-design, uh, eventually, they even if they do not become designers, but um, if they are able to you know, learn the way how, um, you know, the process of design, and if they are being taught properly, um, they will be able to use these skills in, in other parts of their lives, not just, not necessary for designing. Yeah, and I have seen, I have seen this before. To solve any problem, not uh, only yes. the design problem, but any problem. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, so, I, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I agree with Sylvia because I think because um, many of them, they're like the real user and they can, many of them, even they don't have the design background, they can have many like creative ideas and um, that I think, and I really uh, enjoy your lecture because it's kind of, I um, I feel like when a student in a design school, they kind of learn the um, design process and sometimes they kind of stuck in that, um, the framework or the design process that they have to follow and it's kind of sometimes it's block their creativity so to see something like a, your like diagram or mind map that uh produced by a non-design student really um kind of i think it's kind of like because they probably can do it before they get into the program but now they kind of like this might be wrong or might be not good enough but it's good to see that yeah Thank you. Thank you. I think it's going to help with uh, students a lot to like um, see that there's many um, possibility to, to, to do the design. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. In fact, um, I did not show um, everyone uh, in this presentation. Um, I've seen students using the design process to uh, develop uh, new, new food, food stuff, like a new kind of, uh, you know, uh, snacks and things like that in New Zealand and very impressive. So students are basically using the design process, but they use it in another way to, to develop new types of uh, snacks. Yeah. And the prototypes are actually food and I ate them actually. <laughs> <Are they> good? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, those, those were prototypes, a little bit stale, <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, nothing happened. <laughs> Okay, well, you were the guinea pig. Oh, uh, yeah. So, any other comments? I mean, I was hoping that students could say something like, gee, you know, I really disagree. I don't think I need to learn more design. <laughs> but then nobody is. Ask question, asking question. You know how to ask question. Janice? <laughs> <laughs> I'm creeping behind her back. Any question? And, and not question, any comment? Yes, finally a student. 
we can say whatever, but it's more important to hear from them. <laughs> Hello, I'm Janice, and I'm from DI. And when looking at the case studies of you mentioned in the PowerPoint, I really do feel very, I, re, I recall my past <laughs> in secondary school, which I, I didn't really study the design subject, but I was studying the visual arts and then that time um, I really will do the mind map thing and all the like uh, prototype and a lot of memories in the past <laughs> but uh, like present um, I think because I was too busy on other things. <laughs> so I don't really have the time to do this. So it was such a memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand. Um, I actually visited um, schools in Hong Kong also. And uh, yeah, looking at what the students did. So um, I, yeah, I agree. So I think at um, you know, for secondary school students, um, um, I, I have to agree that um, not, you know, we, we still have to, um, you know, have a lot of effort to create this uh, public awareness and understanding um, about, um, you know, design as a subject, not just, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, even when was, I was young, it, it, it goes the same, you know. Like when we look at um, art and design, we think that, oh, okay, it's like, um, it is for people who are talented, you know, who have the drawing skills and things like that. And sometimes we kind of miss the part that, um, in fact, when doing this kind of design activities, there are a lot of uh, higher level or, you know, a lot of thinking inside. So we may tend to look at, like studying subjects like science or mathematics or you know, in other areas. I mean, I mean, I have to admit that I, I was I was the same. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. But um, now you are in TI, so doing you know landscape design, right? Yeah. So I hope that um, your the skills that you learn maybe um, you know now that you have more memories of what you did in secondary school. <laughs> yes, yes. I think um, in when studying landscape architecture now, um, I really consider many more details than before uh, mm. using the knowledge that I learned uh, in, in this degree study. So um, actually, it uh, I can say it would be a more thorough design idea than before. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So, I okay. Maybe I ask. Can I ask you a question? Just a very short one, or you can ask your friends. Okay, students. Okay, you can ask students. Okay. My my question is that um, in your in your proposals, right? Do you think um, do you think you know students can be your important stakeholders in uh, you know in all your landscape design or you know as a kind of important stakeholders as part of this uh, you know uh, revitalization process or the landscape remediation process? Do, do you think students can be important stakeholders? Uh, hi, I'm Magnus from DI. Uh, oh. oh, sorry. Hi, I'm Magnus no from DI, and yeah. also the classmate of uh, Janus. <laughs> and I, and I thought, and I think it's it does because uh, although students uh, are in charge of uh, designing the revitalization projects in maybe let's say in the Pofulan village, uh, it's one day, but actually. Uh, a students may also be a user 
can they can uh, change their identity often and they can also uh, be a user and they can if they're interested in those uh, those scenery like the rehabilitation projects and so they can also be a uh, where they can maybe take a photo or act as a to, uh, to become a tourist uh, spot and so uh, they can also be a stakeholder as well and to yeah so i think it does thank you mm -hmm. thanks and maybe just to give you maybe it's just a uh, throwing out ideas okay like in singapore um recently uh, in recent years what they do uh, is that they get design studios to do research or social research so so you, we always think that research done by researchers right in the university or something but um recent in recent years the singapore government has been getting design studios to do social research and um, this kind of research uh, you know has been done in a, in a perspective of of course the elements of design but what is important is that this data that has been the research, the data or the findings from this type of research is then after that open to the com community and to the public and the industry. So these findings becomes the kind of a base knowledge for the community uh, to use and then to improve their own community. So, so sometimes the job of the designer is not just the design part already, I think it can also involve the research part and then providing what you research to the community and then the community can use the kind of uh, data to actually do their own revitalization. So it becomes a kind of ground up. Kind of I agree, approach. I agree. Yeah. Okay. So any more comments for Leon? Well, thank you. Thank you again. What a thank lovely you. way to, uh, a lovely and refreshing way to end and conclude our lecture series for our workshop. Thank so you. Um, I hope um, all these lectures um, will benefit and also inspire uh, students as well as tutors, practitioners, um, and, um, and probably the immediate uh, place that we can think of, think of using all these knowledge is probably in our project at the Pokfulam, but hopefully it could also benefit your future projects as well.